Hey everybody, this is Greg Ryder, CEO of Angel Investors Network, and I'm excited to create and launch our first live Google Hangout with John and Lisa Thorpe, the founders of Intel Bio, and just amazing people that want the best in health for us. They've dedicated decades of their life to this, and the stories are amazing. And this is gonna be the first of a series where every week we do this and we talk about uh, what they're doing at Intel Bio, this amazing technology and all that kind of stuff. So Lisa and John, appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for being here. Our pleasure, Greg. You're welcome. So today we, we're starting off with the death of medicine. And I know that that is kind of what you're all about and kind of get, get what got you going in this. So I'm just gonna let you dive right in. And when you guys talk about the death of medicine, what do you mean by that? Well, death by medicine. That's death by medicine, yeah. Death by medicine has far surpassed heart disease and cancer. In the last year, and you can Google it, it was an article by Dr. Gary Null, um, and it's substantiated by about 150 MDs and PhDs um, that these figures are correct. Uh, we lost 783,000 people last year by cut you, drug you, medicine. They either checked into a hospital without an infection, got one, died of that, bad mixture of uh, drugs that they were prescribed by a doctor, um, mistakes uh, surgically, um, you know, transferred downstairs from the ICU and somebody forgot to change something and they died. But um, no one wants you to know these figures. 783,000 people died uh, last year. In the last 10 years, we've killed more people with our medicine than we lost in every war we ever fought and no one's talking about it. And this is what's distressing is that uh, we have ways that are non-drug, non-invasive and harmless that, that we can enhance a person's health dramatically. So that's, that's, the, um, that's the goal here is to get people familiar with alternative integrative care that can only enhance your body's ability to heal itself and not deter it. Well, I want to applaud the both of you for bringing a voice to this, and, and I'm glad to be a part of it and leveraging you know, my knowledge in marketing and technology to do that. So Lisa, have you guys had any personal experience like within your own family of, of, of death by medicine? Uh, well, I don't know about death by medicine, but I, I was suffering from a fibromyalgia type syndrome when I met John, and I knew uh, from my own experience what was available uh, through our, our standard of care, and there really wasn't a lot. And so when I met John, I was really excited that there was something that I could get out of this kind of chronic uh, fatigue and condition that, especially back then, at a very young age, seemed uh, daunting. So, so I'm, I'm one of those success stories, and I don't, I don't think that I personally have. Well, you know, yes, I've had like my father died of cancer, <clears> but I don't, I don't look at him. No, I personally right. have, Greg. You know, and my father, um, my father back in 1986. Uh, you know, he said, John, my cardiologist has been out of town. Um, I'm going to find out. They said I had an ulcerated esophagus. I'm going to go in there today and find out what the hell's going on, you know. And the last time they stuck that scope down my throat, they didn't give me any um, anything for the discomfort. So I'm going to ask them for, you know, for something, for some medication for that discomfort. And so, you know, that's the last words I heard my father say. My dad walked in to St. Joseph's Hospital. Um, they did... Um, give him some Valium and whatever else they gave him, but they to just to relax him and calm him down as they were going to send the scope down his throat. And, um, and then they said, well, at first we thought he was just having a reaction to the Valium. And then we realized he was having a stroke. So whatever they did, and then naturally I get the phone call, you know, well, we don't think your father's going to live through the night. Um, you know, he's, and I said, he walked in on two feet. <laughs> what you guys do? And so they said, well, we, you want us to do all the codes and everything on your father. And naturally, you know, um, my father had lived a very good life, um, but he never really recovered after my mother's death. You know, I, I, was, I was raised next to, you know, on the doorstep of death. 
So um, my mother got incurable cancer when I was one. She was given a year to live. Um, double radical mastectomy, she had breast cancer. She was the guinea pig rat for cobalt. So they scarred her chest so severely with the cobalt treatment back in those days. And my mother, little mother that was barely five foot tall that hung in there for about 10 years, um, finally succumbed to that horrible disease. So I, you know, I got to sit next to a mother that was dying of, of cancer. And when you have somebody that's on death's doorstep on a daily basis, they, they don't tell you stories. So um, when I asked my mother, you know, what did we do to make God so angry at us? And, and she said, honey, this wasn't God's plan. God's plan was right and just and good, but because man has turned away from God, that's why we have these. So don't ever blame God. So I went, okay, God's good. Man's not so good because he's cut up and scarred up my mother, but that's all they knew. Same thing with, you know, um, with when you get cancer, you know, they're going to, the oncologist's hands are tied. They must prescribe chemotherapy, which they know is a known carcinogen. But if they don't, they're subject to malpractice. So, you know, it's about, you know, our goal is to give doctors new tools with new rules, tools that are not so detrimental to a person's health or their immune system. You they know, are complementary. Complementary to, to us as electrical before we're biochemical all day long. We're all a bunch of charged particles. So, so um, you know, this is what we're trying to, not only my lectures have been on death by medicine, as well as common sense medicine. So that's, that's the two kind of uh, platforms that I stand on is, is common sense medicine. Well, and let me lay a little bit of the groundwork and let, let you help me or I'll give you the lead you into doing this. So I know your personal story and you and I kind of share this love of hang gliding together and, you know, the flight, the, the free flight. And, and that's kind of how I resonate with you. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I was with the two of you the night you met. Now you've been happily married for all these years and have uh, your wonderful children. But that's a side note. Uh, you have been involved with this holistic healing technology, non-evasive microcurrent technology for going on 20 plus years now. And how many people, like just just give us some 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 symbols of how many people have you seen that's been affected by this technology in a positive way? <clears throat> well, it's been a 30-year, January 6th made 30 years since I've been involved in so three decades. Um, I never, ever expected myself to be invited to um, Curing the Incurables, uh, a leading doctor's group down in Antigua to lecture on curing the incurable. So never my wildest dreams that I ever think I'd be sitting in this chair, nor did I think that my colleagues and my patients were world-renowned doctors, cardiologists like Dr. Steven Sinatra. And um, so I've overseen in the last 30 years, 40,000 plus patient hours. Now, I had 20 people when um, I was involved with Castle Medical Center in their outpatient work well rehabilitation, and there was three on Oahu, and then they bought three more physical therapy centers down on Maui. So I ended up with approximately 15 to 20 technicians, each seeing eight plus patients per day. So, and going through their soap note documentation on what they did for this patient that had bulge, herniated disc, low back pain, fibromyalgia, um, carpal tunnel, TMJ, you, you name the gamut of whatever name you want to put on a disc ease. And um, so I would go through their soap notes and say, well, that worked, that didn't, that did, that didn't. Do this, go just local direct. I don't care what disease they've got, put a probe right where they hurt put their finger on where they're feeling that pain, put your probe there and treat around it. If it moves, follow it. And so <clears throat> no matter what name the disease had, it still came back to the same thing. Where do you hurt? Put your finger on it. So that would most commonly be an area of inflammation. And that's what disease is. It's, you know, how the body is responding to the intrusion, the autonomic nervous system. That's in charge, who's in charge. So, you know, in my 40,000 plus patient hours, if we had a 90% success rate, can I think of 4,000 people that didn't respond? 
Absolutely not. Can I think of 400 that didn't respond? Absolutely not. So, you know, can I think of maybe 40 people that didn't respond due to various reasons? Yeah, maybe. So I still say, yeah, we have a 90 plus percent success rate reduction of chronic pain associated with dis-ease. You know, we've got- now see those. Those are such amazing numbers, and, and now that I've exposed to it and really researched it and worked with you for the last few weeks, it's just blowing my mind. And um, talk to me really quick about that for a second. So why is that? Tell, tell everyone who's never heard of microcurrent technology, maybe the machine, give us a two or three minute description of our bodies are electrical and why this technology works and, 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 then, your, and then your thought process on why is it not out there? Well, you know, I... I explain to people, I say, you're diagnosed with an EEG, electroencephalograph, that's your brain, electromyograph, that's your muscles. Everybody's familiar with an EKG for your heart, heart rate variability, you know? So I say, okay, you're diagnosed with an EEG, an EKG, an EMG, and how do they bring you back to life? when you have a major heart attack, what do they use? And they have to think about it for a little bit and they go, oh, oh the paddles, those paddles, right? They, I said, well, what are those paddles? Electricity. Go, okay, so you're diagnosed electrically, you're brought back to life electrically, why aren't you being treated electrically? And the very simple answer to that question is, the last thing the pharmaceutical industry wants is a painless therapy that gets you well and costs nothing to use but a few cents in electricity. You might think you don't need drugs. And this country's legs are based on the pharmaceutical industry, which brings in a trillion dollars a year. That's our oil here. So don't mess with our oil because that's big pharma. And that's why we're losing doctors left and right that seem to be one was just left in a field in uh, Europe that, uh, oh, they think he died of natural causes. So common sense medicine means, you know, the last thing you need is, is expensive drugs. Your body has the ability to heal itself as long as you put it in a situation to heal itself and it can do so all by itself. But it's electrical before it's biochemical all day long. It's also been the, the lack of reimbursement because uh, these types of tech technology, this technology uh, didn't fit into the existing model. And it's difficult for a practitioner, number one, to have the time that it takes to do this modality. Uh, but more importantly, and, and sadly enough, it's, it's really about their ability to make money. <laughs> and it's, it, uh, it, it can be billed under physical therapy codes, but uh, you know, the, the standard standard care in PT is still going to be a more profitable uh, than the time it takes to do, say, this type of technology. So part of it has been been the money, people being able to make money with this. There's no money in cure. Yeah. There's money in treatment, you know, simple. Um, you know, and that's what, no one cares. It's like when I've taken a patient that had three bulge herniated discs, six millimeter bulges, he was already pre-approved for um, surgical intervention where they would fuse the discs. Um, but the side effect to that would be the potential of paralysis, lower extremity paralysis. So the patient came to me and he said, my insurance company will pay the $80,000 for me to have this surgery. I don't, I don't want to take the chance of getting paralyzed. Do you think you could help me? And I said, yeah, let's call your insurance company and let's let me tell them what I'm going to do. So we broke down what we did into codes: e-stem, biofeedback, neuromuscular re-education, modality, procedure, multiple areas of the body. Where it came out to about two hundred and fifty dollars per session that I was treating, and I called the insurance company. I said, I think I could have this patient DC, which means discharged and back to work, but it's not going to be standard. Um, physical therapy, which is eight to 12 sessions, three times a week for about a month, I'm going to need probably about 120 days, three or four months of continued care so we can take his body from a degenerative to a regenerative state. And so they said, well, if you could do that, that's a miracle. I said, well, that's what I do. So it was actually 110 days later that the patient was discharged 
back to work, full range of motion. And um, did I ever get paid? No. So I called the insurance company nationally and said, hey, I'm John Thorpe. You said you'd be paying me every three weeks. I've never, oh, well, we changed those codes. We're no longer accepting e-stem. And what we used to have at $34.50 is now just $18. And who actually did the therapy? Was it the physical therapist or was it a technician? I said, well, I build it unattended. So that means that a person walked in and put a couple of plates on you and walked out of the room. Do you mind if I have a technician there monitoring the patient's comfort and also adjusting frequency and intensity to that patient? I don't like to leave any patient hooked to an electrical device as I've walked out of the room. So because I've enhanced that, you're, you're going to penalize me because I had somebody overseeing it. So bottom line, until I got my attorney involved, you know, then we got 10 cents on the dollar. We finally got reimbursed. You would think that insurance company would go, what did you do? This patient has signed off of their work comp. Um, what did you do? You saved us 75000 No, they get paid a percentage of whatever the bill yeah. is. You know, no, that's so incredible. All, they're all in that it together. System, that system wore John down. I mean, it's, from the time that I met him 12 years ago, he swore, he's like, I will never run a, a, a clinic that's billing again because it was so frustrating and uh the the practitioners today that are the most successful are the ones that that bill for service they they just charge and some of them there are just such amazing practitioners that they have no problem charging they've built a reputation uh it's easy for them to get that amount of money or they have a they have a, a market of of clients that can afford it um, and that's one of the sad things uh, currently is that, you know, here's this technology that's amazing that can only help people and really only the people that can afford it are, are getting it right now. So. Well, it's like Dr. Morabadi, who you talked to the other day, you know, he treats his patients and says, basically, if I don't see response within a few days, I probably can't help you. But, um, you know, 90% of his patients and then those patients all refer at least four to six other people to him and say, hey, we want that magic wand. He so, guarantees. He guarantees if they're not at least 50% better within three sessions, uh, he'll give their money back. And he's given that guarantee, I think, as long as he's been in business with it, uh, which is how long? A lot, long time. And, and he's, well, never, he's, never had, he's never had to give money back. So he no, always and what you what yeah. you just said, John, excuse me, what you just said, John, I don't want to lose my thought here, is so important. You, you said, you know, there's no money in it. That's like this mindset with practitioners that they got to go here and spend the money here. But talking to Dr. Moriavati, he's like, I get four to six referrals out of every patient because I get results. And I don't have, they don't keep coming back and revolving door. They get results and they go. But I keep getting, and, and I'm he like. That's the business model. He's, he's got the model set up. And it's one model. I mean, that, that's also been the other issue is this technology can be fit into multiple different models in many different walks of the healthcare uh, world. And if, if, if you know, in marketing, it's a challenge. To, if you're trying to be everything to everyone, it's more effective if you're honing in on one market. And, and uh, as it has been an organic company, the technology has continued to just go a little bit to every different uh, healthcare market. Yeah, no, I love what you just said there, Lisa, because that's that's part of what we have to do with these webinars and, and these live hangouts and all of our marketing material is we talk to the different segments of the market. I know you got a big deal going on with okay. a professional okay. sports league and we yes. got the chiropractors yes. and we got the equine business. We're going to create all that stuff to communicate to that market so we can help them create a business and create a model that does help people, that does create results as well as build a business and create jobs and stimulate the economy. Right. You would think, you know, we have the answers for whatever presidential candidate is coming in. We're out to improve health care quality, lower health care costs. And I've got 100,000 plus jobs of technicians that can earn it you know, in a 40 hour week. I don't know where you can go and get a, um, a technician job at twenty five dollars an hour. And with the potential of raising that to fifty, seventy-five dollars an hour, depending on on your um, involvement with ownership of the equipment and and cutting a deal with doctors and um, and allowing you to treat, because this um, doesn't fit into the time frame of most physicians, but many many physicians are embracing it because of the results. You know, Dr. Richard Delaney, um, and you can see his testimony on our website. He's practiced medicine for almost forty years. 
He said, I've never seen anything like it. He's a cardiologist, board certified cardiologist, board certified geriatrics, board certified emergency and care he's physician. Personally doing And he's personally work, treating his which patients. Is amazing. You know, and he said, I took a patient today. She hadn't been able to walk up her stairs. She runs up and down her stairs now. And it took me about nine sessions. You know, and that lasted for a year. I've never seen anything like this. You're the best kept secret going. So now with the new Obamacare, which means no care, the United States citizen is used to walking into an office and saying, here's my credit card because my deductible is $5,000. You know, so that's one thing that's led to our, in our favor right now and changing you know, the way that people look at it because they know they have a huge deductible and it's not just on their insurance. So that's what Moravati said, John, we've changed dramatically because people are used to now pulling out their credit card, knowing that their treatment is going to be 150, 250, 500 until they meet their deductible. So, so the climate's changing. Um, I think people are really ready for us. The baby boomers are tired of being sick and tired. They're tired of getting bad answers from their doctor. They're tired of the doctor spending a very little time with them, two to five minutes per session. So the climate's changing. And the good doctors are embracing what we're doing. You know, the good doctors are really stepping up and wanting to be doctors again. That's a problem with this country. People don't want to be doctors anymore because they're not getting paid. Right. Well, you guys said it. I think the timing is right. And with the internet, and with what we can do on the internet and sharing these videos and getting the word out there, it's just fantastic. So we're right about that 30 minute mark. Is there any last few minute things that you wanna share? And then again, we're gonna do this every Tuesday for a while, you know, Tuesday lunch with, with John and hopefully Lisa, cause I, I, like, I like the combo. Uh, but is there anything you guys wanna leave us with the last few minutes before we wrap up today's session? Well, we, you know, just, people are becoming aware of us. You know, we've been just invited to be the best of the best of the NHL Alumni Association. Now, that's gonna open huge doors for us throughout um, you know, major sports, as much as I've treated you know, Major League Baseball and, and hockey players, retired hockey players, and you know, we've treated you know, the people that we've treated um, with this instrument, everybody from Pope John Paul, you know, for his Parkinson's years back, actually having an apostolic blessing from the Pope, you know, to the Gretzkys, the Montanas, the Bradshaws, the Joni Benoits, the Mary Decker, the Jack Nicholas, the Fuzzy Zeller, the Lee Trevino. You know, all of these have been clients of our equipment. But if you weren't an elite or professional athlete, you never heard about it. So now we're going to bring this to the world. We're going to change the face of medicine as you know it today into a non-drug, non-invasive world with a 90 plus percent success rate and reduction of chronic pain. And we're not afraid. We're going to go up against the big pharmaceutical industries and let them know that there's a better way than having a 15 to 30 percent efficacy and getting your drug passed. That, by the way, the side effect is death. Yeah, no, I'm blessed to be uh, a part of it. And so I'm going to invite everyone watching today. If you guys have chronic pain, you know you're a professional, you're interested in this technology, you're finding out more, go to intelbio.com. That's www.intellbio.com. And on there, you can find testimonies, you can find contact us forms, you can find out more information about uh, this technology and this platform. And tune in with us every week as we're going to share with you real live case studies. We're going to break down the technology and protocols and how it helps and who it helps really, really specifically. Every week we'll just feed you a little bit of information and we'll keep it short and sweet. And uh, will you help us share, share this with somebody that you know who's, who's, who has chronic pain. I personally had knee problems for five to six months and I never had knee problems my whole life. And I love to ski. And in one 20 minute session, the pain was gone and the problem was gone. I went skiing, uh, six, four weeks after that, I tweaked my knee on the ice, came home, my knee was back in pain again, another 20 minute session and it's gone. So I have a personal testimony of how it helped me. And I've got my mom with rheumatoid arthritis. I, I'm doing treatments on her and she came in with tears in her eyes and said she was able to eat with her right hand. She's right handed by the way. And she, she has so much pain and so much arthritis in her hand. She was not able to use her right hand to eat. Now she's using it. And then a couple of days after that, she came in again in tears 
of happiness because she was able to put her bra on without pain and she hadn't been able to do that in, in like a year. So uh, I have personal testimony. So I want to say thank you. Uh, you guys are a true blessing to the world and to what's going on. And we're going to do this every week. So this is Greg Ryder saying, do what we do. Wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude and tell somebody you love them. And until we talk to you next week, have a fantastic day. And you guys can say your goodbyes as well. Right. Thank you. And God bless you all. It's Thanks, God's Greg. plan, not my plan. We just keep stepping up. Thanks, all right. Greg. We're out here, everybody. All right.